Located on the campus of Valparaiso University, the Brower Museum of Art is a hidden gem of Northwest Indiana. Director and curator Greg Hertzlieb was kind enough to open up the archives and share a couple of pieces from the museum's permanent collection. His first two choices are contrasting interpretations of the dunes landscape, reminders of the power of art to shed new perspective on the familiar. Now Dudley painted the dunes exclusively for about 40 years. He was instrumental in getting the dunes preserved as state and national parks, actively raising awareness, but also through his paintings and his shows, showing people how beautiful the dunes were. I don't want to say there's really a typical Dudley out there. There are a lot of different types, but collectively you get a sense for his vision. Uh, his use of startling colors from time to time, like a real lime type green that might not even seem natural. But nevertheless, the next time you're out, well, Dudley painted purple and blue shadows. Maybe I could find some. Son of a gun. They are kind of purplish. And so it's exciting seeing how uh, the artist translates the subject into something that might be stylized or exaggerated from nature, but nevertheless rings true. Where is that? Is that the Wild West? What you thought was maybe some exotic locale is in your backyard. Go out there and check it out? Oh my gosh, I didn't know this view was possible. Art makes the familiar unfamiliar in a it's fun, exciting way. Seeing anew. Earl Reed was more of an illustrator, graphic artist. It's almost like writing a story. This is what the dunes are like. But instead of using words, he's using marks. Now Dudley did do some stormy scenes, but nevertheless, he was mainly about the, uh, you know, a, a nice day. Whereas with Reed, all of a sudden you get back in the forest and the woods and the wind is kicking up. And, and who knows what could happen? The imagination runs wild. And to my mind, that's where Reed is coming from. You find yourself supplying your own text as you look at it. They have a gothic feel to them. I think about it being the product of a stormy, windswept kind of environment. The dunes as a setting for his stories, for adventures. Swirling kind of clouds and blowing trees and black birds and things like that. It just lends itself to a narrative. In their respective ways, you really get a sense of the dunes in all of its different guises and identities. It's just very different treatment of the dunes in the two cases. But to have the two of them together and to be able to offer them in some depth to our public is a thrill. During the times they were alive, people thought of the dunes as kind of a wasteland. Then all of a sudden an artist goes out there and says, this is fantastic. And people see the majesty of the painting. Oh my gosh, I didn't know this view was possible. It takes an artist to show you how to see sometimes. 